Cyprus was always part of Europe. Cyprus, Europe's cradle, was always a natural stepping stone for commerce and exchange between the Eastern and Western worlds. It was a gate to the Orient and a bridge connecting three continents. Cyprus was a welcoming and hospitable place, a point of departure and return. From the moment the sea-beaten Greek Achaeans set foot on the isolated peninsula of Ma in Paphos, bringing with them their gods and beliefs, Cyprus became firmly anchored in the West. The exploitation of rich copper deposits and the exchanges and interaction brought about by this activity allowed Cyprus to overcome its insular mentality and connect to the rest of the Western world. Different wine-pressing instruments and the first wine jars were found on the island, as well as an entire perfume-producing factory. Copper was exported as far as Sardinia in Italy, Rio Tinto in Spain, Livorno and Marseille. In addition to this precious metal, Cyprus was able to show off its impressive collection of scripts, precious jewels, wine and intoxicating aromas. Meanwhile, Cyprus's expertise in copper production had already spread beyond the island's boundaries. The people of Cyprus transferred their knowledge and expertise to the Greek mainland. The island consisted of ten kingdoms and maintained relations both with the east and the west. Cyprus was well aware that its own prosperity and survival depended upon its ability to assimilate the influences of other civilizations and adjust its cultural connections with the East and West. For instance, when Salamis was under Persian domination in the 8th century, Cypriots adorned their dead with splendid Eastern ornaments, but buried them according to the Greek burial rituals described in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. It was during the Pax Romana, which was indeed a very stable and tranquil time for the island, that Apostle Paul first set foot in Salamis. The residents of Paphos were the first to embrace Christianity, and soon after the island was endowed with catacombs, basilicas and sumptuous Byzantine monasteries. Cyprus became a Byzantine jewel both in terms of faith and tradition, setting a fine example for the subsequent Christian transformation of Europe. It was Cyprus's unrivaled strategic location that first attracted the attention of Richard the Lionheart of England during the Third Crusade. Beginning in 1191, the island became firmly rooted in the Western European sphere of influence under the 300-year rule of the Lusignan French royal family. Numerous cathedrals were built by the most talented craftsmen of Campania in an effort to replicate the astonishing cathedrals and monuments of northwestern Europe. Gothic churches, luxurious palaces, gardens, fortifications and harbours recreated the same privileged and lush atmosphere of continental Europe. Enchanting music, noblemen, Ladies in silk garments, exotic foods and falconry all became part of a discerning and charming lifestyle. Cyprus encountered the Enlightenment through the words of Boccaccio and Dante, who immortalized its unspoiled beauty. Petrarchism influenced the poets and musicians of the country 
whilst the beautiful princesses of Europe seduced the kings and dignitaries of the island. At this point in time, Europe and the Orient had fused in perfect harmony in Cyprus. French, Genoese, Catalan, Venetian and Pisan nobles and tradesmen who had been brutally persecuted by Saladin on the Syro-Palestinian coast settled in nearby Cyprus, bringing with them their families, rights and traditions, but also their architects, craftsmen and artists. Castles with fortified walls and structures were constructed to protect the island from pirate raids and hostile attacks. Bills were introduced and trade with the West brought an unprecedented amount of wealth to the island. The Lusignan kings married into the grandest European noble families, such as Eleanor of Aragon, who became Queen of Cyprus or Alicia of Savoy. The incessant intrigues and scandals of the French royal family impressed locals and Europeans alike and became a favorite topic of conversation. Despite the clashes of the Genoese fleet with the Lusignan rulers of Cyprus during the 14th century, the cities of Nicosia and Famagusta were magnificent in every respect. When the last Lusignan king, James II, married the beautiful daughter of the most serene republic of Venice, Caterina Cornaro, Cyprus had nothing to envy from Venice, with its own astonishing doge palaces, fortifications and walls. The city of Famagusta became well acquainted with Proveditores and Capitanos, the representatives.